I woke up one morning a couple of years ago and was like, well, I was never born beautiful, but my wife is. And I wondered what it had been like going through life with that reality. I came up with the idea to do a horror film about beauty, not to criticize it or to attack it, but because beauty is a very complex subject. Everyone has an opinion about it. The beauty industry is extremely seductive, and the illusion of beauty takes up an enormous amount of our time more and more from our lives. What I found interesting was what would happen when these three trains, obsession, longevity, and beauty, collide. These are quotes taken from Nicholas Winding Refn, director of The Neon Demon, which stars Elle Fanning as Jessie, an aspiring model who's just moved to Los Angeles, whose youth and vitality stimulate a sort of fascination from those working in the industry. As she plunges deeper into this world, her journey takes a dark turn. The online consensus surrounding the Neon Demon has been middling. It hasn't been poorly received, but it hasn't been favorably received either. It's definitely a polarizing one, a response that's not at all atypical for Nicholas Winding Refn. I, for one, am not split down the middle where this movie is concerned because I fucking love this movie. The Neon Demon is a darkly whimsical, trance-like experience that's heavily mood and imagery oriented. Refn is definitely an arthouse-minded director, and in that respect, the Neon Demon doesn't really hold your hand as you watch it. It's a show-don't-tell kind of affair. But the funny thing is, even during the scenes where telling is taking place, the dialogue and performances feel economical and consistent because it's all thematically adherent to the film's core exploration of the horrors of commodifying beauty, obsessing over skin, and the sheer destruction of comparing yourself to others. Why have I chosen to talk about The Neon Demon during this month of horror? I loved this movie when it first came out back in 2016. And the reason why it has always stuck with me is because whenever I think about horror movies set in the world of fashion and glamour, nothing really comes to mind except The Neon Demon. I rewatched this movie in preparation for this video and it is every bit as compelling as I remember it being. But on this second viewing, it actually got under my skin even more. Beauty isn't everything, it's the only thing. That's the tagline for this movie. And it's got me thinking. Now I might as well share some insight. Having a conversation about anyone, particularly predicating their worth on how they look, how they dress, etc. I don't like it. I always get uncomfortable about it. Now granted, if I'm attending events where people get all glossed up, suited and booted as it were, it's always worthwhile to pay a compliment as an acknowledgement of the time that they have put into looking their best. In that regard, that's where I'm generally comfortable expressing how I feel about someone's appearance. But a full-on discussion and conversation, even if the intentions seem harmless, I can't engage because it can easily veer off into dehumanization. That is where I'm coming from. I don't follow the modeling and fashion industry because of that. Now look, if any of you watching this gets tangible entertainment value from it, good. Simply not for me. But this is where the Neon Demon has my attention, because it takes a subject I am not so comfortable around and makes a substantial premise for a horror movie around it. That's why I was able to connect with this movie. Elle Fanning is perfectly cast as Jessie and her performance is excellent. Her gradual alchemy from the new kid in town, the deer in the headlights, to someone who embraces the spotlight with a callous ownership of her appearance. In my opinion, one of the best moments of acting in the film happens during this trippy sequence where her change in demeanor is evident. Fanning absolutely smashed that turning point. There's a greater sense of vulnerability with Jessie because she's still a kid, 
She's 16 years old and she hasn't finished high school yet. Even if the movie wasn't explicit with that information, this is something that you can infer as early as that scene in the bathroom with Ruby, Sarah and Gigi. When you juxtapose Jesse with these three, she really does look like a naive kid opposite these three who appear bitter and worn down. Fanning's approach with bringing Jesse to life has a nice balance of wonder and naivety, but also a cold egotism reflective of the world she becomes deeply entrenched in. She captures these sides well. The supporting cast did an exemplary job at fleshing out this world even more, portraying characters who prize skin-deep affection, characters suffering from extreme body dysmorphia that have had to get grafts, lifts, and work done to achieve an unidentifiable standard of beauty that Jesse seems to accomplish without even trying. Desmond Harrington and Christina Hendricks make a lasting impression with the minimal screen time they have, Alessandro Nivola is such a despicably plastic presence, i.e. really, really good and works well in the story. Bella Heathcote and Abby Lee were amazing. I found them quite menacing. The standouts for me, however, are Jenna Malone and Keanu Reeves. I'll start with Keanu Reeves first. It's well documented how much of an awesome human being Keanu Reeves is. He is a personal role model of mine anyway. His range as an actor might not be vast, but I don't think he gets enough credit for his dramatic work. In The Neon Demon, he shows something new here, showing a type of character I have never seen him play. A character like Hank, the manager of the motel where Jesse is staying. This guy is an insecure asshole. Now, I was worried that Reeves was going to hold back, but he doesn't. Actually, as the movie goes on and you learn more about him and how absolutely depraved he is, Reeves intimidated me. There's one scene involving a bedroom and a knife that got under my skin quite a bit. What can I say? He floored me. Jenna Malone is usually a standout in everything she appears in, but here, her character Ruby, she is doing things that are just so nuts and so crazy. But Malone's ability to ground this character's actions with sincerity, the way she behaves around Jesse, how all of that changes when the power is going to Jesse's head, Malone believably conveys that initial kindness. And the same can be said for when she starts contorting that kindness into a disturbed lust. I could not take my eyes off of her. The movie ain't perfect. There are two things I want to address. In terms of what I would critique, uh, Carl Glossman, who plays Dean, the only character who's completely removed from the fashion scene, who sees beyond what is skin deep, this character had an opportunity to stand out, and I just don't think the final performance here conveyed that as effectively. Every time he was on screen, I wanted to connect with him more, but I just didn't feel like I was getting anything back from him. He could have done better. And it's a shame because he's the character that I very easily could relate to the most here. The second thing is a bit more all-encompassing. The movie is a little bit too long. Winding Refn's penchant for experimentation and relishing in style at times just felt a bit too overemphasized. The subject matter of the Neon Demon doesn't require much dissection. I know what it's about and I understand why it's being told the way it is and I am all in on the metaphorical and symbolic approach, which is why I could have done with a few scenes being shortened and a few shots being lingered on way less. There were points where I almost felt it tipping over into style over substance, but the kind of style over substance that does a disservice to the storytelling. Particularly towards the tail end of the running time, I did start to feel the length a little bit. That's what I'd say on those. The hyper-stylized atmosphere and imagery of the Neon Demon is immaculately captured through the cinematography and editing, but the final ingredient of this movie's explosive vibrance can be found in the score by Cliff Martinez. Whenever Martinez and Winding Refn collaborate, it's just euphoric. Martinez's score features a stunning balance of sparkle, and unease, all bottled in a magical synth sound 
completing the movie's immersively trippy disposition. Because the story is told from Jesse's perspective, that feeling of youth, ambition, and dreaming big is something that should have another communicative output that isn't just Elle Fanning's performance. The music really does a great deal of that extra legwork, and it is just so gorgeous. It's one of the film's strongest assets. My favourite track from the score is Gold Paint Shoot. Go and listen to it. Thank me later. What makes The Neon Demon a scary movie is how deprived of humanity these characters are, how predatory they are, how willing they are to forego someone's innocence just to get by. A young girl's appearance becomes the universal object of obsession, attracting behaviour mired in sinister jealousy and malicious entitlement. In spite of my earlier critique, the slow pace works in the movie's favour because it gives you time to sit with just how cutthroat the modelling industry is and the devastating consequences it has on those who enter it. The core of this film's exploration of beauty is not driven by jump scares, characters making idiotic decisions, contrived plotting, or unnecessary exposition. It's a story that unfolds visually. Whenever there's dialogue, it's deliberate, succinct, and moves everything along. It never felt reductive. It's a story driven by the pursuit of an invisible standard. A standard that turns people into monsters. Monsters that will do anything to achieve that standard. What's it feel like to walk into a room and it's like in the middle of winter, you're the sun? even if it means preying on innocent youth. To be that deeply uncomfortable in your own skin that you go after someone else's? Comparison really is the thief of joy, huh? What happens when obsession, longevity, and beauty collide? You get the neon demon. It's beautiful, yet morbid. Simple, yet complex. Exciting, yet unnerving. Wondrous, yet discombobulating. Full of clarity, yet hypnotic. I love this movie. If you haven't seen it yet, give it a watch. Argashin tu slahaig the month of horror gobilis fehekahar. Kig me shifsa kekyaunala.